right, guys, hey, let's do plot data uh, before I make you have to sit through the whole video. That is a major pet peeve of mine. <clears throat> this was not a high-end yield plot. This was a nutrient management learning plot for me and an efficiency plot. And on a year like we had, it is definitely not a high-yield plot. So we had an area we sprayed with the drone. We had an area we did not spray with the drone. The drone feeding was at an R2 growth stage, uh, brown silk, and it was source, uh, a little potassium, and uh, some sugars. It was basically to stimulate the plant, to stimulate the soil. Under the drone application, we did a V5 foliar feeding and a check, and where there was no drone, we did a V5 foliar feeding and a check. So under the drone, the V5 feeding gave us five bushel. Five bushel, let's put context to this. Uh, we did not pour on a bunch of NPK. Uh, and to gain five bushel, the check was already 20 bushel better than what I expected the field to be. Now to do your, to do five bushel better than 120% is amazing. That is just screaming at us that we need to keep pursuing this next year on a much larger scale. Take this year's results with a grain of salt because it's our first time, it's our first real testing of this, and it's only uh, one or two tests. But you, it is, five bushel on a year like this under the context of this field is screaming God starting a bush on fire in front of Moses kind of volume. Where there was no drone application, the V5 treatment gave us seven bushel. He is throwing stone tablets at Moses at this point. <coughs> Where we did a V5 treatment without the drone versus V5 treatment with the drone. So the drone application now, we're checking the drone application. The drone application gave us a 10 bushel response. 10 bushel? This is phenomenal. Where we had the drone application with no V5 versus no drone and no V5 was 13 bushel, 13 bushel. What? That is massive. Remember, R2, we're not changing kernels around. We're not changing kernels. All that stuff is determined by that point. All we're doing is stimulating the plant to get more food, to eat more food, and we're stimulating the soil to release more food. And all it did is packed kernel density, and it gave us a 13 bushel response. Amazing. Did that applications pay for themselves? Bar none, light years ahead. Yes, they did. Because if we look at uh, the overall fertility program out here, and we look at the amount of fertility that we moved on the soil test, absolutely. So for this 200 bushel field, we were at 1.1 on the nitrogen. Now keep in mind, we applied, or I applied, an extra 100 pounds of urea, 50 pounds of K, and 50 pounds of P because of we had a year's worth of rain in a couple weeks time frame, and I did not know what kind of nutrients we lost during that, so I over applied a little bit, but it's still, at the end of the year, we came out at 1.1 on nitrogen, which is pretty much standard across the country. Up here, uh, 1.1 is, is very normal. Um, and, and we ended up with 75 pounds of applied uh, broadcast uh, potassium chloride, 50 pounds of DAP, and 75 pounds of calcium, gypsum. And, uh, and all other nutrients were done through the V5 foliar and the tassel, and when we moved 23P, 7K, and 44 nitrogen in the soil where the V5 treatment was done, I did. I would not have needed to buy that 50P, 50K, and 100 urea. It would have replaced that 200 pounds of fertilizer. Uh, so this gives me the confidence that next year, because next year, 2025, how are we looking? How, how excited are we to go into 2025? Um, we need to, 2025 is going to be a game of efficiency and it's going to be a game of marketing. And so on the efficiency thing, uh, next year for sure, 
uh, we are going to be doing a lot more plant testing and feeding based upon that. Uh, instead of just buying bulk fertilizer ahead of the planter and then whining and crying, oh, there ain't no money in farming. Well, that ain't what the retailer's saying. The retailer's just rubbing his hands together like can't wait for Bob to show up because Bob loads everything ahead of the planter. So let's get that crop removal rate calculator out because I'm going to Hawaii. It, uh, you know, the choice is yours. Believe the science and believe how a plant actually functions and work with how a plant functions. Uh, we need to do another video because there is so many uh, ignorant myths on social media from farmers about uh, nutrient management in these snake oil companies. And we, we'll do a, a fun video this winter, but all right, let's get that combine going so we can get this corn harvested. And, and guys, thank you very much. Well, here we go. So the first two passes down the field was our check and uh, this round is our treatment round and then uh, then we hop over for two more times so there's one more check and treat and then on the other side one more check and treat um, but I think the grain cart will be full <laughs> before then I don't know I might have to go get the wagon um, and so yeah I think it's doing pretty dang good. Um, you know, I've said it before in the past, and I'll say it again, these Capello heads do a phenomenal job. So I got the head slowed down, I, I got my ground speed slowed down because of head shelling and uh, trying, to, trying to reduce head loss as much as possible. But these Capello heads, they don't chuck ears out the front very much, very little butt shelling. Uh, very little stock material comes into the head. Um, this is some really good corn. I think with the weather we had this year, we lost a lot of top end potential, but uh, I, I think we got some, I think we still have some good potential here. Um, so far, this is probably gonna be the best cornfield I combine. Uh, other than I have one other between yeah I have one other that might give it a run for its money but this is some pretty pretty good corn I would say for our area uh, for my farm kind of deal um, I just I was trying to get you to the grain tank but all right let's uh Let's hop up here and see what the grain cart says. I'll tell you what, when your rear window looks like a bag of seed corn, that is that is a great sample. That is a great sample. It, uh, man, that is just threshing like a dream this year. Let's start filling the old system up, huh? Off, 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 off. Auger is on. That belt is running. That belt is running. That door is shut. Well, that's that's about all we needed. Corn is falling. Worried about my door down here. Do I have my door down here open? Yeah. What do I got going on? Oh yeah, corn is flowing. Corn is flowing. There we go. Does that make 24 corn officially underway? Man, there's just nothing better than uh, night corn. Oh, I wish I had a full crew that, uh, with grain cart and truck guys and a huge, big, huge grain facility so I could just eat acres all day long. Oh, man. This is exactly like IP Farms Gleaner A2. I'm, I'm, uh, Loving his Gleaner A2 because my dad had a Gleaner A2 when I was a little kid And I'll tell you what I did more acres Sitting in the machine shed as a little kid pretending than uh, Most guys have ever combined in their life for real <laughs> It uh, It was phenomenal and That little thing was phenomenal. It'd be fun 
it'd be fun to go get a combine, one of them old combines like that, and put in the corn like this. Imagine like Herman Warsaw with an old Massey 750 doing uh, doing 300 bushel corn. So I'm not going very fast, like I said, just taking my time trying to do a good job. Um, I am really loving this. This is just some uh, magnificent corn. But the, I, I'm just so tickled pink with the stand quality. Even after that four inch snow event, hardly any corn, there's not one. Not one broken off plant leaning over. Um, the tassels are broke off, but but there's a lot that are still standing. I mean, it just, look at, there is nothing on the ground. Nothing has fallen off the strength and quality of these plants. And we don't need uh, testing to tell us uh, that our nutrients did really good to have that quality of a stand. I, I'm 100% impressed and happy with Terrell's program and Source. Well, first team of the year. Um, what a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Mostly sunny, like it's trying to come out. There's some scattered clouds, but there's some open sky. Uh, maybe it'd be a partly cloudy day, whatever. Uh, zero dew. The air isn't very damp. Uh, it's like 35 or 38 degrees already. So what a what a magnificent day to get going. We do have some rain moving in this afternoon, so I'd imagine we'll end up losing our sunshine. Um, first team of the year, we're dumping in about 20%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Things will change. Um, I don't know if anybody gets that Brady Bunch reference. Dumping in at 20%, so we're going to dump out about 17%. So to move three points when it's going to be 40 plus degrees, almost 50 degrees, it's going to go fast. But we already got quite a head start uh, with the test plot last night. Um, it's funny on this old dryer how you get to know your equipment. So when the humidity on the screen uh, leaves the bottom and starts getting about halfway to two-thirds up that side, then uh, well, as the humidity starts to come around that edge, then I can start unloading and guarantee that if the humidity is in the top half of that screen, we're fairly close to dumping at 15, 16%. If the humidity gets too high, then we're over drying. And if the humidity gets too low, we're dumping a little wet. Obviously, we moisture check it on the unload side. Um, but uh, just as a quick reference, when I walk up to the dryer or when I pull in with the tractor, I glance at the dryer and you know, like, oh, better speed her up a little bit. Uh, so I wanna always be dumping at 16, 17%. <clears throat> I'd rather take a, a half a point dockage or even a whole point dockage versus over drying. When you over dry, you, it costs you twice. One. It was extra pro propane that you spent. Two, it slowed down the system, so you lost some productivity. And, and three, excuse me, you lost a little bit of, of yield. So instead of selling 15.5% corn, you lose yield at you know 13% corn. And so um, error a little, little on the high side. I always thought try and get it perfect. Um, so yeah, so in a little bit here, I'll I'll flick on the unloading and and let the the show begin uh, while while the dryer plays catch up because we already got quite a pile in the bin. I got to empty the grain cart yet. Um, so while the dryer plays catch up, we'll take care of chores around the farm and uh, <clears throat> and then come back to combining. There we go, our first batch. So the dryer sat. It just sat and run to get that first batch cooked. We're at 15 at 140. And uh, so now we'll just let it run for a little bit. And uh, while I'm 
while I'm unloading wagons and uh, on the next wagon we'll come in and check it again.